Welcome to Strength in the Numbers. My name is Andrew Codd, accountant, author, and commercial finance entrepreneur. And it's my job each week to bring you leaders in finance and business and deconstruct with them their real stories, insights, and hard-won lessons into practical advice on the key strengths and qualities you need to remain relevant in accounting and finance today, as well as the steps you can begin to take to elevate the impact you make to have a fun, successful, and rewarding career in accounting and finance. Now let's go over to the show. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Strength in the Numbers. Our guest mentor today is Martin Gilchrist, a director of Gilchrist & Co. Chartered Accountants. And I met Martin recently for a coffee and scone at the foot of Sleeve Donard, which is the tallest mountain in Northern Ireland. And immediately I was very impressed with Martin. I mean, I've spent part of my career in practice, but if I was to ever set up my own accounting practice, I'd love to set one up and run one just like how Martin is running his with his wife. And it's not necessarily on the accounting matters it's more around how martin serves his clients and how he's continually looking for ways to go help them but if you think about it accountancy and finance started really with small business and for a lot of us accountants and finance professionals that are working with much larger companies nowadays we can still learn so much in fact martin has been described as probably one of northern ireland's best networked professionals i mean he's got a huge following on social media i think about thirty-five thousand followers on twitter alone and he's also famous for saying that there's so many network events going on in belfast you could probably eat your breakfast lunch and dinner for free every working day now it was a real challenge to edit down our conversation uh, we covered so many topics and had such a great conversation but what i'd recommend you listening in for is the importance of resilience in business and the different types of resilience and its main benefits Also, Martin shares with us five practical steps for building more resilient networks around us. And this is a key skill all of us should be able to do in accounting and finance. And Martin presents it very clearly and so practically all of us can start doing it tomorrow. Also, Martin touched on why he's not worried about technology putting him out of a job. And he really explains very well why that's the case. And also why mirror neurons matter for accountants and finance professionals. So Martin also touches on a number of resources during our podcast together. So you can check those out at the show notes at sitnshow.com slash podcast slash 056. So that's enough from me. So without further ado, over to Martin and the show. So Martin, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. So, so Martin, we've met previously, but for some of our audience, maybe not as familiar with your background. So would you mind maybe sharing with us your story in accounting and finance? Absolutely. My name is Martin Gilchrist of Gilchrist & Co. Chartered Accountants. Essentially, Gilchrist & Co. looks after, and this is very specific, professionals in independent practice. So we are a small practice that looks after freelancers, professional freelancers, and professional people who work for themselves and by themselves. So that's what we do as a practice. Um, Essentially, we started about 11 years ago, and it's a small practice. Myself and my wife work together, and at any one time, we have about 300 clients. So that's us in a nutshell. So Martin, you run the practice with your wife. So how does that work out? Um, Where I'm sitting in my office at the moment, so Michelle and I actually work in the same room, and we have been doing this for... 10 years now the thing is we like each other so that that's a good start you know we, we are, we're, we're friends as well as husband and wife so that, that's a good start michelle's a very patient woman too but um michelle's not with me today but i would so i can say this um, <laughs> michelle is a much much better accountant than i am when she, okay when she was doing her institute paper she was in the top three in ireland in her accountancy papers and she is absolutely a natural so what we've been able to do within the practice and in order to keep the smooth running of everything that goes on is that we have very much separated our roles so my role is primarily practice development and administration and michelle's role is financial accounting and taxation services so we don't step on each other's toes we work very well as a team and you know what we both have the same goal in this journey you know we both we both look at the same outcomes so it makes for a brilliant working relationship and one that has worked very well not only for us but also for our clients and not only for our clients but it also works very well for the network of people that are connected to the practice and we find that that is a very important aspect of our personal relationship our working relationship and what we're doing at Gilchrist and Co. So it sounds like a really good team setup, and like in terms of your role, in terms of that that client development, are there sort of any key steps that you can maybe share with our audience in terms of how to do that well? Yeah, absolutely. So we are very lucky in that we don't have to sell. 
we, we have built a practice. And although I don't like the word, I suppose it describes a livelihood practice that sustains the lifestyle that Michelle and I want to have. You know, we, we, if somebody wrote me a check for a million pounds, I would take it. But, you know, it's not our fundamental raison d'etre. What we want to do is to get satisfaction and enjoyment and rewards and recognition for the work that we do. We want to be very good at the work that we do. Now, from a practice point of view, what that means is that we develop, the practice development for me is not about going out and trying to find clients because the clients come to us. What practice development means to me is going out and building a very strong and stable network of good people that understand who we are and what we're about and that we understand them as well. And then if you have that network it supplies you with everything that you need. Yes. Not just clients, but information, heads up, support. I was, was at an event yesterday, a fantastic event yesterday morning down in the Bullet Hotel in Belfast City Centre. It was organised by Fleet Financial, and Fleet Financial organised a series of business events called the Knowledge Network. And yesterday morning's event was about resilience. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't take you to be in business very long to realize that you need to have resilience. You need to have strength of character and the ability to stand up after being knocked down. And one of the points I made at that um, meeting yesterday was, yes, there's internal resilience. There's your, your own strength of mind and your own self-confidence and your own stability. But another very, very important thing in business is the resilience that comes from the people around you. If you have to do something that's difficult, if you come up against a difficult problem and you have a network of people, even if you're a freelancer or an individual working for yourself, if you have other people that can, you can turn to, even to hear, have you had this problem before? Did you get through it? Oh. And to have that story about, yes, that happened to me or something like that happened to me before and I got through it, that helps develop resilience and resilience is key um, to any business person's um, toolbox. I, I, I loved how you, you've pulled that together, Martin, and you sort of prompted a few thoughts in my head about one of the reasons for this show, the, the series of podcasts. It's it's to bring people who may be a bit frightened of asking for help, maybe who not have developed the networks yet, to get those experiences from guest mentors like yourself who come on the show, share how we can sort of do various things, and, and also how you found your way through accounting and finance successfully. That you know That's why, that's why we're talking, because you found something that, that you do very well. And you're sharing that with us all. And I actually love that expression because ar- around the network um, and, and building people, uh, building a network where you can understand people, good people, and people understand you and you're helping each other out and you're helping b- build that resilience. Now, in terms of getting to that stage, like sort of what sort, sort of things could, could our audience do to sort of build those stronger, more resilient networks? That's that's a, that's a dangerous question to ask I have to say because I give a I give a, a presentation on this <laughs> a while ago and therefore I've got all the we thoughts thought of it about oh, this good. Um, um, good. Uh, so I could waffle on for this for a very long time but I'll, I'll try and summarize it very quickly and I hopefully I'll remember it that, that's the next thing because I'm going to say five things here's five things that you could do um, and then I'll, I'll maybe remember three so I'll, I'll, I'll give this a go so Looking at building a network, how do you build that strong, supportive, um, productive, useful network around you? And what I would suggest is there's five things that you could try because it's worked very, these five things work very well for us at Gilchrist Co. The first thing is start something. And by start something, I mean start a group, a club, you know, a get together, a meetup. And um, because if you start something, you get the credibility that's gone with that. And we have started a number of different things over the years. So from example, the Social Media Association for Business, which had more than 2,000 members that had well over 1,000 people attended um, real events. And wow. we had a steering committee and we had you know, um, speakers and sponsors lining up to support that. But from our point of view, Gilchrist, what's that got to do with Gilchrist & Co that only looks after professional freelancers? Well, we got the credibility. And credibility leads to conversation, and conversation leads to opportunity. In our case, the opportunity was about twenty thousand pounds of new client work over the course of the year. Now, that's that's, a, that's nice. It's not world changing, but you know how much nice time did I spend on that? Maybe two or three hours a month. You know, um, 
proper work. You know, there's other conversation went around that. Which when you talk. But starting something is, is very important. The second thing is starting stuff is hard. So the second of five <laughs> things that I would suggest is, you think, oh, that is putting on something and sticking your neck yeah. is hard work. <laughs> Much easier to join something to join somebody else's club or group or association. And there's a brilliant TED talk on this about not being the leader, but being the first follower or being a good follower. Um, I wish I could remember the name of it because I'd mentioned it now. Maybe we'll add it to the, the notes afterwards, but there's a yes, very different. good TED talk on this. And essentially what that says is that you can't be a leader unless you've got followers. And if you can become a good follower in any group, a good member of a group, you essentially get the credibility through that as well. Not as much, but then you're not investing as much. So that's the second thing, um, um, join something. The third thing is um, find a space. Find a physical location where you can become part of the furniture. Now, we were talking before the end who started today about a meeting I had down in a place called Loft Space. And Loft Space is a co-working space in the middle of Belfast. Lovely spot. I'm not actually a member, but I'm in and out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you want to share this now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Max Taylor knows me very well, so I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have our own office that we, we have to work in. But if I'm having meetings or stuff, I will go down and I'll book the meeting room and I'll pay the fee um, to use the meeting in loft space because I know that when I'm coming in and out, there'll be other people in the space, friends of mine, connections, people that I don't know, people that I want to get to know. And just being in that space gives them an opportunity to see me, to say hello, and the serendipity that comes out of yeah. having a space where you become a, a regular um, contributor, or a regular participant, or someone that's involved in the events is so valuable. That's the third thing. The fourth thing is, and this is one of the most important things that has worked for Gil, Chris, and Co. It really has been a game changer for us. Do stuff for other people without, and it has to be genuine, without expectation of reciprocation. So do stuff for people that you're not accepting going, well, if I do this for... Uh, <laughs> James, he's going to do that for me. That That's not the way that this works. It has to be genuinely um, as a gift. So true. And what happens there is that what people, if, you, if you're going out there and, for example, Andrew, doing the podcast for you today, we had to have a conversation beforehand. We had to agree, you had to agree to, to let me on. You know, you're, you're putting a little bit of your credibility on the line, having me <laughs> in this podcast. And then through that, we get to know each other a little better. We, yeah. We're making judgments on each other. And the fact that I'm, you're helping me, you know, you're, you're putting me on your podcast, which is uh, great. But also, hopefully, I'm being helpful as well, being a contributor to the podcast. And out of that, we're building a relationship. You know, we're out of that, we're building something meaningful. And even though I'm not giving away a professional service, I'm not giving away a product, I'm doing something that benefits me, I'm not expecting anything in return. I don't expect this to be shared. There is a real value. And there's many, many ways in which people can do that. So that's the fourth thing. Do stuff without expectation of reciprocation. And I can't believe I've remembered them all. I've got to the final one. Five things <laughs> you can do in order to develop your network. And the final one is, now I describe it as have a party. And that's a little bit flippant because I don't actually mean alcohol and dancing yeah, and well, you know, do, do all that type of stuff. <laughs> what I mean is find an excuse. Find an excuse to bring together people that you really admire, respect, like people that enjoy your company, your company just as much as then as you enjoy theirs. People that excite you. People that you know really. Um, when you're having a conversation with them, you're you're you feel yourself um, lit up and motivated and all that good people. Because if you bring people together like that together into a room, whether it's just five of them or ten of them or fifty of them, and we've done this a lot uh, at Gil Christen Group, and don't. Preach to them. Don't, don't, you don't have to give them a presentation. You don't have to try and sell them anything. You don't have to set a direction for them or tell them how wonderful you are and how you're going to lead them all into the sunrise. <laughs> Just literally put them in a room um, and the magic will happen. So find excuses to do that. And they would be my top five tips for building your network by Martin Gilchrist from Gilchrist & Coach. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. I love the way you just plugged that as well. And yeah, I love that. And, but no, but look, I, but it's it's you know, it's, I I love the steps. And as you were going through that, I mean, I've worked in practice myself, but I've also spent a lot of my career in multinationals and SMEs too. And I can see the transferability of those five steps. I can see, you know, 
people doing people doing that. I mean, like I do it myself quite often. I set up informal groups. They start out in formal groups and then they grow. But that's how you start getting to know people, credibility, people understand where you're coming from you understand them better they can tip you off the things that are coming up you can proactively try and provide value for them and that grows and 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 like particularly multinationals that can happen in many many different countries as well and you get out to see a bit of the world and learn a bit more and, and actually get some different perspectives and and realize that perhaps we're not in it alone there's there's other people out there willing to help and I think that that's one of the key differentiators between businesses succeeding and failing is having a good support, resilient network around them. So, Martin, really appreciate you sharing that. And it's applicable in multinationals to finance teams there, just as it is to to practice and I, and everything in between. So, thank you for that. Now, I, I really do. Now, I also want to pick your brains at at the moment. You know, what's really exciting about what you're doing at the moment? What's really exciting you? One of the things that really excites me is the use of technology by our clients. So okay. literally today, again, I, I don't want to talk about what actually happened outside the podcast, but I was meeting up this morning, this morning down in Loft Space, and the, the client we're meeting is using a new piece of technology, a cloud-based piece of technology, which helps um, with their translation business and the way that they price their translation businesses. Uh, while I was talking to her, um, we were thinking about how we could connect that to the cloud-based resources that we already have, things like Xero and uh, Receipt Bank and Dropbox and those type of things. And what we're actually doing through these technologies with very small businesses, with indiv individual freelancer businesses, is taking away the painful time suck oh. that they, where they don't really know what they're doing, that they don't really want to do it anyway, and they really want to find an easy way to get that taken off their plate. And we are finding that month by month, week by week, and even day by day, these opportunities and technologies are making life better for everybody. That excites me. And you know what the great thing is, is having that um, external perspective looking in, you're, you're really well placed to advise on that because a lot of entrepreneurs, what would they give to win some of their day back? You know, remove some of those pain points. I mean, is that really value adding? You know, uh, typing up expense statements or... Or having to, I don't know, uh, copy out invoices and things like that. Or, you know, th these these are very useful things and technology enabled. I mean, you know, what's your view on technology then, Martin? Are you sort of more enthusiastic about it or are you sort of fearful of what it might mean as well? Um, I see the videos from Boston Dynamics sometimes. And you see these robots that can jump over walls and punch holes in doors. And you sort of go, if the wrong people get those robots, we're all in trouble. Yeah, yeah, I would quite yeah. like having one of those robots myself. But <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, stuff, yeah. that stuff's scary. The fact that yeah. so much of your personal information is out in the oh. world that then algorithms can be used to sort out your religious background and how much money you have in the bank and uh, your, likely, your likelihood to um, def default on a debt through information that you're putting out there completely innocently. You know, those things scare me. I have to say, those things are frightening because the world is changing at such a pace that standard politics, standard state processes, the things that in society that have protected us up those up to this date can't really keep up. So we're relying on the decency and the honesty of the 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 you know the moral um, fortitude of the people that actually control these things to make sure that we're not being ripped off or manipulated or used in some way. So that's that's scary. Okay, and and but that's a wee bit like the weather. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, you you, you hope that it all works out, but uh, and it probably will. I, 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 hope, I hope it probably will. But setting that aside, setting aside the the doomsday scenario, terrible things that could go wrong in the world. From a work perspective, am I worried that technology is going to put me out of the job? Absolutely not. I am absolutely not worried. I'm, I am fully confident that technology is going to make me more effective. It's going to make me more, more efficient. It's going to make me more useful to my clients because can, technology can do a lot of marvelous things, but what it can't do, and what it can't do at the moment and will not be able to do for a long period of time is two things. It can't put stuff in context. So no matter how good your robot is, even if it can punch through walls and, and be everything, <laughs> You're watching and uh, you know choosing special it cannot be you it cannot be in your skin it cannot have your experience it cannot have the hundred thousand conversations that you've had in your professional career it cannot know the people that you know that it, it can't 
yeah, that, that might be it could gossip but it's not yeah <laughs> all that stuff that creates context and understanding and meaning that's required in order to be a professional advisor that's the first thing context the second thing is empathy not being able to read someone before they even say a word or read between the lines or understand nuances in in um, human interaction and i'm going to give you one small story here that proved to me the importance of empathy one small story i'll not say the guy's name though that's not fair yeah <laughs> I'll, not say, I'll not say the guy's name but there's there's there's, there's a guy out in the world and he's involved with s okay he's involved with seo and he is grizzly grizzly is the word you use he's, he's, he's a strong, well-built round grizzly sort of character and that's why this thing stuck in my mind this thing that you told me stuck in my mind because he, I, it's something i would never have expected him so i bumped into him at some networking event one day and we we're having a conversation and the conversation turned to empathy and the meaning of empathy in, in marketing and advertising and the rest. And he said to me, Martin, what do you know about mirror neurons? Mirror neurons. And I went, uh, well, it's, it's something about understanding how people work and, you know, we sort of get each other. That's, he, he said, mirror neurons are incredibly important. Mirror neurons. Always, always be, be aware of the fact. And he says, he says, they're the most important thing in business. And I, I, I obviously put this feet <laughs> It's a bold statement. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big speak. You know, that's a big speak. Yeah. So obviously I had this face on doubting. What he, he, he must have read the mirror, mirror in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he took, took the word, yeah. He, he, picked up, he picked up on it. And he says, Martin, there's one test that you can do to prove that you can both read and control other people's minds through this idea of mirror neurons. He says, the next time you're speaking to someone, and you can tell them beforehand, you don't have to be sneaky about it, but you can tell them what you're doing. The next time you're having a conversation with someone, you're standing face to face with smile. Put a smile on your face, or even just smile through your eyes, or even just think about smiling. Smiling. You don't even have to smile. Don't even just think about smiling. And I bet you the person you look at can't help but starting to smile back to you. Even if you have told them that that's what's happening, it's almost impossible for them not to smile back at me. So empathy, and that's that's just a test of it, a silly little yeah. aside to what is going on. But empathy, the, the the ability to understand how well the person you're communicating with or the information that you're trying to get across or the job that you're trying to do, how is it impacting the person that you're actually doing it for? How are they... How are they accepting or receiving or understanding that? And, and is, are you communicating with them in a way that's creating the result that you had hoped for at the start of the conversation? Robots can't do empathy. Not yet. Not, 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 that, yet. not to that extent. <laughs> We're safe for a few more years. Hopefully. <laughs> I know. I love that. I can see how you're really enthusiastic about you know the advantage technology can bring for your clients as well as your work. So that's, mm-hmm. I think that goes. I think that goes for all of us in accounting and finance as well. But you know, it is important to acknowledge that yeah, there's a bit of fear out there. But I think on the whole, it's 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 probably looking good for us. Uh, Martin, I want to sort of step it up a couple of gears and delve a bit more into some rapid fire questions. Okay. Um, in terms of in terms of your career, work life, personal life. What's been the best bit of advice you've ever received? When I was a very young man, starting out in accountancy, my first, um, near the start of my career, I worked with solicitors. I specialised in doing legal accounts. And one of the first practices I has worked in was a family practice. And the patriarch, a guy called Pascal, um, was still there. He was, he was in his 80s at the time. And he wasn't really there to work. He was there because it was somewhere for him to go during the day. And he liked being in torturing everybody else uh, if he'd been a solicitor for a long time it was his business even though the sons had taken over um, and he liked coming in and he would come in for a wee chat with you he'd sit down and he'd ask you how things okay. he'd sit down and have a chat with you. and i can remember him sitting with me one day and this was a guy who was really respected in the profession in belfast the judges the barristers the qcs if you were in law in belfast you knew pascal very very respect but he was only about five foot tall and he was a real he was a real weak character 
in his in his own right, but a, a real gentleman as well. And I can remember him sitting down and he said to me, um, Martin, just keep in mind that when you're in business, and particularly in professional practice, um, if it's a family practice, your clients grow with you. So as you go through your career, you will have a cohort of people, that network that we maybe talked about earlier on, and they will grow with you. It will be very hard, and essentially he didn't go into the detail, but essentially the point he was making is you, you when you have a, a professional practice, particularly a standard professional practice, make the relationships that are going to last for a very long time. Because as their businesses grow, your businesses will grow. As they develop and, and get better and, and really start to get the satisfaction out of business that you get as the business moves along, you will win from that as well. And just be aware that your clients, that your network, grows with you and that was something like, i'm not sure how deep it was or how useful it was but it, it was it was something that stuck with me that's actually that's 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 very neat you and it's just those moments do you feel like it's at the time did it make much sense it was more later you sort of sort of said ah oh, yeah that was really think, good advice at the at the time i remember thinking to myself i feel i feel privileged that this guy's taking time to sit down yeah. and just have a chat with me yeah. Because he, he was a, a senior uh, member of the profession and he could have, like I can remember going to Christmas dinners and stuff, he was the sort of guy that everybody who worked in the room acknowledged him or the important people came over and spoke to him. You know, he was that sort of, sort of a character. And he didn't need to take time out to come in and sit down and see how I was and have a chat. So that was the first thing that he, he, he was the sort of guy that would, would invest that time anyway. And at, at the time, I could see the sense in what he was saying, but I never really uh, went home. I didn't go home and analyze it and tease it out all over my mind. But obviously, it stuck with me. Stuck because with you. And when I've been asked that question previously, I, it's been one of the things that's popped to mind and um, I've been able to talk about. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's and I found it to be true now that I'm, yeah, no, I'm much older, halfway through my career. But the people that are with me now have grown with me. I know, I know you're passing that on to our audience, so we really appreciate you doing that, Martin. There you go. Uh, and in terms of maybe resources, I know you mentioned it at TED, TED Talk there earlier and, and, and so a couple of other associations, but um, would there be any other resources, books, documentaries, or groups that you'd recommend our audience go check out? There's lots of stuff going on. You know, <laughs> um, there's, 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 there's so much. Um, on a personal level, um, in relation to a group, there's, there's a great group online called Bismarang which is, is it's, it's a play on boomerang so you throw it out and it comes back is the idea of it and it's a it's a facebook group that's headed up by a slizzer called um shane mccann there's about two thousand members on it and every week they do a live zoom meeting where you can join and effectively network online and it's been very good they, they also do live events as well so if you're in and around belfast but i know there are, there are people that have been joining in from um, the us um, wow. and wow all around the world as well but pr primarily it's it's for people in northern ireland i find it's very good it's it's online networking it means that you don't have to um, go anywhere myself personally what i do is i have three social media channels that i primarily use facebook linkedin and twitter twitter you know i'm the, I, what i do is i use that when i'm live if i'm at sulfate and they have a hashtag this event and there's pictures being taken and all the rest, I use it for the live to see who's there right there and then, to see who the pictures have been shared, to see how the conversations are going. I find it very good for real time stuff. LinkedIn, I don't really use, I, 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 I'm on LinkedIn because everybody else is and people want to connect with me on LinkedIn and it's, they can go on there and they can, can, find, can find me and people would tend to message me through that and stuff. But my real place is Facebook. Facebook. What I've done on Facebook is, and I know it's not perfect, but it works for me. And what I've done is I follow people. Now, I haven't got this perfectly. You know, you go to my Facebook profile, you go, that's not, that, that's not what works. <laughs> Post nonsense. There's actually a picture of us on there at the moment. The, oh, the, cool. The, I have to check it out. Yeah. yeah you know, it's um, from our meeting on Saturday. Um, so yeah. me, James, and you in Newcastle. That, that's that's my oh, wow. better at the moment because I knew I was going to be talking to you. And I thought it was an interesting thing to share. My Facebook thing is where I let the world know who I am. You know, not Martin Gilchrist, where is he going for his Christmas dinner and who his mum is and that type of stuff. But Martin Gilchrist, the professional in practice who works at Gilchrist & Co., what's he like? 
who does he talk to what events is he going to who's he interested in and um, what does he share what's he reading what's he concerned about these these things my professional persona goes on to my um, Facebook page. But it also feeds me information. So I'm connected to people that are sharing information all the time. So um, um, uh, your, your podcast would be something I would be interested in seeing, but there's other podcasts on there. So um, Davy Sims um, is a Belfast guy that does podcasts. Barry Phillips um, mm -hmm. does a Movers and Shakers podcast, which is very interesting. I would follow the likes of Gavin Wall from, um, from the Wall Group. You know, people, that in my view are going above and beyond what is necessary what it is that's necessary to simply do their jobs it's one thing to be really good at what you do you know to be a professional person that works to the highest professional standards and ethics that that does a fair job for a fair price and goes out and does that day in day out. that that's for me is the first hurdle that you have to after that, you have to go out and show that you know what, it's not just about the work. You're not just doing a really good job to get really well paid. You, you have an obligation. That's, that's not a fair well, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, 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 something, there's something to be gained from going out Gain. and giving more than that and getting involved and putting your neck out and having those conversations and giving the outreach and doing the sharing, but also to benefit from the people that are doing those. So I follow people that I believe that are doing that type of stuff. And hopefully that makes me a better and more informed person in case you never know. You might be invited to a podcast, and it gives yeah. you to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so true. I, I do, I do find like I, I think if you know people are doing a good gro job, great, and they're enjoying it, great. But I feel there's always that little bit we can do to become better informed, learn more, and actually just connect with people because we're human beings. At the end of the day, Absolutely. wouldn't it be very boring just to exist in an office? You know, like who knows where a conversation can lead to? You, you know. And, and like, there we are, here we are talking on a podcast <laughs> so, <laughs> a few days later. So, so Martin, look, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Martin, you know, you've been a great guest. Um, I'd, I'd like to, to wrap up soon. But before I do, is sort of any other sort of final thoughts or advice you, you would like to share with our audience? There was common questions that get asked at these podcasts. And I was looking down a list of questions that might arise. I did prepare, you know, it's not all just off the top of my head. And one of the questions that normally gets asked is, are there any good books that you would read? Now, that come, came up in relation to the resources thing that you came across. And I thought I would use that as an opportunity to give an example of something that I thought was extraordinary. Extraordinary. Yeah. And extraordinary. It, well, that's, I, that's a strong word. Yeah, and it made an impression on me that I will remember for a long time and I will use in conversation when I'm talking about business stuff. And this, this what happened was... I'm not going to say the guy's name again. He's, 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 he's a young man. And he came to me um, at a black tie event that I had been invited to. So I've been invited along to this black tie event. He was sitting at the table. He was introduced to me, and he already knew who, he, who I was. And he went, Martin Gilchrist, I have been meeting, meeting meet you for a long time. I would love to chat to you about what it is I'm doing. And we had one of those very brief introductory conversations. But he followed up on that conversation and he asked me if I would meet him and sit down at buy a coffee and we'd sit down and have a proper chat. And I said, absolutely. Because he's a very intriguing, interesting young man, doing very interesting stuff using social media and broadcast and PR and something. It's a fantastic story. And he's also doing quite a, quite a bit of work, social work and stuff. So a big part of what he does, the, the, the is there's his, the reason he does his professional activity is so he can do his social activity as well, which which also impressed me. And we agreed to meet down in the Mac. And if you don't know the Mac, the Mac is a fantastic arts venue in Belfast City Centre. And downstairs in the Mac, there's a place called um, I think it's called Nadov is is the restaurant downstairs, and it's a real business hub. When you go in there, you'll see young people on their IMAX and you'll see older people in suits having meetings and you'll have, see families and stuff. But it's the sort of place that business people come together, congregate around, because you'll be seen to be seen in one of those yeah. type of places. So we met down the Mac and we got a nice, I got a nice booth. I was there early. And uh, the guy turned up and he had, a, he had a paper bag with him. It was from Eason's. And inside the bag was a book and he took the book out and he said, Martin, I got this book. I went to the shop and bought the book. Now, the book cost £16.99. Okay. £16.99 he didn't have to spend. He didn't have to go to the trouble of going to the bookshop. 
He didn't have to spend sixteen ninety nine. He just decided that he would do this, right? Nobody's ever done for this. People have given him books before, but they've never gone to the trouble of a book. And he said, Martin, I've got you this book because I believe this is the type of person you are and you'll find this useful. And the book, I've got it, I've got it here with me. The book is called Tribe of Mentors by Timothy Ferris. I see you're reaching for a book. You've, you've got it too. Now, it's not the sort of book that you, you sit and you read um, in two or three nights in, in, in on your <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like that, but it is the sort of book that you can scroll through. You can open up, and you can you can get sources of inspiration and information and uh, innovation and all those good words. You know, all the good words. Um, they're they're all in that book. Now, the book is what it is. It's it's a good enough book, and there's there's lots of good tips and tricks in there. But what I learned from that was surprise people by being exceptional. That guy did something that was unnecessary. It was exceptional. It was thoughtful. It was intelligent. He had a reason for doing it, and it struck me. And I will remember that um, for a long time to go. And if that was one tip I could give anybody, find a way to do that. That's amazing. Like not only a great book to recommend, but also a great story behind it. It's a very important point. Like you know, what's stopping us being exceptional to, to others? You know, absolutely nothing. It's just just being a bit more thoughtful. So, so Martin, what what a great way to to end the show! Thank you for being an amazing guest and investing your time in us, and likewise sh- sharing your advice. You know, like the other mentors have, and so other people can draw inspiration for it. And you know, in particularly in times of uncertainty, and also I think we had a good bit of fun here as well. So hopefully they can appreciate that too and have a few laughs as well. So Martin, thanks again for being such a great guest. No, thank you. I have absolutely enjoyed every single minute of it. So thanks for having me on. I really appreciate. it so there you have it hope you enjoyed today's show if you'd like to know more about our guests today their bio and follow up on the resources mentioned during the show you can find all the relevant links and more at sitnshow.com there you'll also be able to get access to earlier shows read the latest blogs there's also an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter which will give you heads up as to when the next show is coming out, latest events, news, and anything that's going to be relevant to help you have a fun, rewarding, and successful career in finance and accounting. And just before you go, we really appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do better on the show, something that's not working, or something you'd like to see, even a guest you'd like for us to invite onto the show, someone who you think might be able to benefit you more and also the rest of our community, please let me know. You can email me. I'm at andrew at sitnshow.com or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message so I know how you found me and we can connect. And really it's our community that will make the show. If we keep engaging and driving each other on, we'll keep on building our strength in the numbers. And when all is said and done, if we can do the numbers better and finance better, we'll create more opportunities for ourselves, our friends, our families, our communities and our businesses. So until next time, have a good rest of the week. Take care and let's keep building our strength in the numbers.